Okay, this um, absolute integral of absolute value of a function. Obviously, on the calculator, it doesn't matter. You just put this in like anything else. You have an absolute value function on there. But if you have x minus 1, I mean, I, this is a simple uh, function, x minus 1, so that we can use this here. But if you draw x minus 1, it's a, it's a line that goes through negative 1 like this, right? There's, there's y equals x minus 1. It passes at that. Uh, maybe we should expand. I'm going to just make it a bit bigger because... It looks like the lines yeah, absolute value. I'm gonna try this right now. Um, I keep blowing it here on this, but okay, this this is this is good here. That's that's fine, right? This is negative one. This is y equals x minus one. If you want, think about what the integral from zero to three is of just x minus one dx. You can kind of, you should be able to just count it. You know what I should have done is shown the grid on this thing. Oh, no, I can't because there's a paper on there. What's the area underneath here from 0 to 3? Here's 0, here's 3 over here, right? 1, 2, and 3. What's the, uh, what's the area going to be here from, what's the integral going to be? That and then this over here. We can uh, we can do it on the calculator, of course. Okay, you can do it on the calculator. You can graph x minus one. Come on, and then you can we'll go zoom decimal. Okay, so that's x minus one. That's what it's trying to draw over there. If you want the area underneath there, uh, we can get it to do this calc thing here, right? This does it on either calculator. Lower limit is 0. Upper limit is 3. Now, when it when it does the area there, remember, how is it going to calculate this? The area, this, uh, this integral that it gives you 1.5, that's whatever this is. It's considering that this is positive and this is negative, right? Because... Of this. Oh, obviously it doesn't like that. Um, you can calculate it with just sort of geometry, right? Which would be a good idea to do right now, I think. Geometrically, what's uh, what's going on here? This is two times two divided by two. So this area here is. Two, what's this area in here? One times one divided by two, this is a half, right? So the area of the top yellow triangle there is two. I mean, it's two minus a half, or it's 1.5. This is why it's 1.5, because this counts as negative a half, right? The net area there is that. Um, if you intuitively just think about what's the absolute value of that function going to look like, if we had to draw it here. Yeah, it's going to reflect part of it. This part's going to stay the same, but this part's going to be reflected up there. What's the uh, what's the integral of that going to be? It's going to be 2.5, right? Because this part's going to be up here now. This negative part's going to be up there, so this is going to become positive one half. All the areas become positive. Okay, you can confirm it on your calculator if you want. I am going to, just for the sake of doing this, let's quickly go back. Um, I'm going to change this now to... Uh, if you do, if you have that absolute value function in there, you graph it, right? That part's reflected up, just like you would expect. Um, do number seven here. Integral zero to 3. Okay, it shades that in. Now remember that we're not trusting this calculator past a couple of decimal places. 
It's doing this numerically. It doesn't it doesn't recognize, oh, this is a triangle, it's just one times one divided by two, and this is another triangle. It's not doing that. It's just doing it by however it's programmed to do narrow little rectangles, it's doing it that way, right? It's doing however wide it makes the little rectangles times the height of the function. So it comes up with this. Don't write down to ten decimal places like that. I would only trust it to two or three here. Okay, so two point five, it's all of it above there. That's that's kind of the concept, right? If you understand that concept, then, uh, then you're good here, I think. Get a picture of this. Could you do it algebraically? The way you have to do it algebraically is to split it into pieces. Okay, because absolute value of some bizarre function. If it's just absolute value of x minus 1, you probably know what that looks like, and you can just do it geometrically. If you are going to do it algebraically, you need to find this point here and split it into two pieces. You need the x-intercept or x-intercepts, okay? So if you want to do an integral of 0 to 3 of absolute value of x minus 1 dx, the way you're going to do it is you're going to say that's the same as the integral from 0 to 1 because that's that point, right? 1 is the is that where that intersects there of not of... Uh, absolute value without the absolute value, right? What what function do I have to put in here? What function is this actually without showing it as the absolute value? It's a negative that, right? It's it's a reflection, a vertical reflection, so it's minus x minus 1, or in other words, minus x plus 1. Okay, make that negative. That's this is this is this vertical reflection for that for that function, right? That's that function. And then the other part of it we're going to add to this is from 1 to 3 of just the actual function because you didn't have to change that, right, of dx. If you're doing it analytically, you have to break it into two pieces or more. If well, you find the point, um, whatever the function is, you solve it equal to 0, find its x-intercept, right? Because whatever that function was inside... You know, it's it has x intercepts. Just put x minus one equals zero. Okay. X equals one. If it's some more complicated function, if it's some function where you need the calculator to graph it, then you just use the calculator to find the integral. But if it's something else where you can where you know what it should be, you, you can uh, just find it analytically. If you have to resort to the calculator to find the zeros, you might as well resort to the calculator just to come up with this number here. When you're problem solving, it doesn't matter whether you use the calculator to do it analytically. You should do both maybe and check your answers. But the concept here is something you should know. All right? So, I mean, this graph here, I think we uh, we probably get it now. If we're doing negative 3 to 6 here, um, if you know what the integral of f of x is, it's going to be this area here. What is that? And then this area here, I need a thinner highlighter. Should have changed it. Okay, the one underneath here, this is, uh, what is this? Four, no, four, and uh, that looks like two. So three times one, I think the area of this is negative three. And the area of the other two things here, this is two times one divided by two. This is a one. And this is three times three. 4.5. So the integral there is 4.5, 5.5 minus 3, 2.5. The integral of this, what you're doing is you're just reflecting that whole thing up, right? Because even if you're taking Math 12 concurrently, you know that you've done transformations and you know it looks like that. This just becomes positive 3, right? This is the integral from negative 3 to 0 in this case of f of x dx plus the integral from 0 to, where does it go to, to 4, of minus, let's make that a big, huge minus here. Make it a thick pen. How thick should we go here? 12. 12. 12. Oh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think you get the point there. That looks like a, yeah, that's a little excessive, I think. <laughs> I think I think 1.5 would be more than sufficient. So you okay, we'll highlight it and we'll make it bold and we'll... <laughs> Green would be nice here. There we go. Look at that. It's highlighted. Uh, plus the last thing here. 
Oh, I forgot the X. You're right. Wow. I got so excited about the minus sign there that, and I forgot my other little bracket here. Plus integral from four to six of f of x, right? Positive. You just have to look at it and flip the parts over there. That's the that's the concept, right? Are we okay?